Hey guys, so if you've been following my channel recently, you'll have seen a couple of videos I did about earning my individual IM norms uh, on the way to getting the International Master title. And in this video, I want to talk a little bit about what I did in terms of my training and how I was actually able to improve my overall level and improve my strength uh, to actually earn those norms and, and eventually get the title. Um, I think one of the biggest things that I did started back in 2014. At the time, I was already stuck at around 2300 feet a for a little while. I was bouncing uh, up and down, and I'd already played a couple of uh, several norm events actually, round robins and open tournaments uh, without much success. I was close to getting a norm a couple of times, but I realized that I needed some kind of you know real fundamental change in order to actually improve my level in any kind of significant way. And one of the first things I did that I think really helped was just change my attitude and my mindset about the whole thing. I realized that my goal was not just to become an uh, international master, but to actually go for the GM title and, and get the, the grandmaster title, um, which is still my, my goal today. Uh, and I realized that since I'm going for a higher title, that I should just aim for that, and the IM title would just be a stepping stone along the way. And I think this helped me in a couple of ways. So number one, I was no longer worried about trying to get norms. Uh, I still wanted to get an IM norm, but that wasn't the only goal uh, in any tournament that I played in. Instead, the goal was to just play the best possible chess that I could and then learn from the games and then keep growing and improving my play that way. Um, earlier this year, or maybe sometime last year, I realized uh, that what I had done was go from a fixed mindset to a growth mindset. This is now a pretty uh, popular uh, idea and I, based on the book by, by Carol Dweck, Mindset, um, that I think was actually really helpful for me personally. One of the ways that this affected uh, my play specifically was that it allowed me to take a lot more risks at the chessboard. Uh, now I felt like when I was playing white, it didn't matter who I was playing against, I should be trying to play for a win, trying to put pressure from the opening, getting an advantage. I knew, of course, I wasn't going to win all my games just from having this attitude, but I felt like I need to at least try and not to try to play for a draw against high-rated players. Uh, and with black, it also allowed me to take more risks and play more dynamically because I felt like, well, the more aggressive you play, you can always learn from that even if it doesn't work out in an individual game or an individual tournament. In one of the tournaments that this really played out in my favor was in the tournament where I got my second IM norm. Uh, one of the first games I showed in that video uh, was a game where I had a big space advantage against a strong international master, but I didn't really know how to break through and uh, you know, the previous me would have accepted a draw in that situation, but I realized that I had a nice uh, peace sacrifice there where the evaluation, in my opinion, was that I should have at least a draw in all lines and that I shouldn't be worse. I wasn't 100% sure, but I was pretty confident that I'm never going to be worse after the sacrifice, and so I decided to go for it. I got a little bit lucky that game. My opponent didn't defend in the best possible way, and I ended up scoring uh, a very, very important point. Uh, so now, it's not like every time you take a risk at the chessboard, it's always going to work out. But I think that shift in attitude is really what allows a player to become stronger. Because in a sense, it's going to be very hard to defeat higher rated players without taking on a certain amount of risk. They're just rarely going to make it easy for you. Another thing I did that was along the lines of just trying to improve my overall play at the cost of perhaps the short-term results was learning new openings. I decided to pick up the King's Indian defense, which I had never played uh, as black before. I had quite a bit of experience of playing against it as white, being a d4 player, and it was always one of those openings that gave me a little bit of trouble. I always felt like I should just be crushing this opening, but then I would lose a lot of games against it. And one day I decided, well, maybe I should just start playing it with black. It was completely against my style at the time. I was more of a solid positional player, um, but I think it was one of the best things that I ended up doing. Uh, by learning the King's Indian defense, I was introduced to all kinds of new positions, new middle games. I was forced to play uh, a lot more aggressively with black and take a lot more risks and go for the attacks. And I think this just improved my overall chess uh, in, a, in a really good way. Um, I also picked up the Taimon of Sicilian. Uh, up until then, I'd never played the Sicilian before with black in my life. I was uh, either a French player or E4, E5 player. And again, learning the Taimon of Sicilian introduced me to a ton of new middle games, new ideas, new concepts that helped me uh, improve my dynamic abilities uh, in chess overall. Um, 
some of the courses that really helped me at the time were actually two of uh, Grandmaster Robin Van Campen's courses for Chess 24. He did an entire series on the King's Indian and on the Taimanov, so this ended up becoming my repertoire. Uh, I also watched a DVD from Chess Base uh, by Grandmaster Alejandro Ramirez on the uh, Taimanov slash Shevenigan Sicilian that I found uh, incredibly helpful as well. And uh, yeah, by picking up these two new openings, I mean, at first it was kind of tough playing new lines uh, in tournaments, um, but after a couple months you always get used to it. Of course, I was also playing a lot of blitz games, a lot of training games, just trying to get as much of experience uh, in these new openings as I could. Another big thing that helped me uh, around 2015, after I had already gone in one norm, uh, was I actually ended up moving in with another chess player uh, who is a master level player. Uh, shout out to, to Tom, a good friend of mine. And uh, we ended up living together for quite some time and doing a lot of chess training. Uh, now obviously it's not going to be in everyone's means to move in with a chess player and just start training with them all the time, but this is something that really helped. We would play a bunch of training games, a bunch of blitz games. Whenever we were trying out new openings, we would always uh, play it out over the board. We would do prep together and then compare our analysis. Uh, and we also worked on a lot of end games together, which I think was, was really useful. Another thing that I did that I think really improved my overall calculation ability uh, was starting to solve end game studies uh, with regularity. Uh, there was a period of time where we would just solve end game studies every day for, for a couple weeks or every other day for a couple weeks. Uh, we worked through a lot of Dvoretsky's end game manual, which was pretty tough, but overall uh, very, very helpful. And over time, I think my calculation ability uh, definitely improved. Um, the typical benefits from solving a lot of endgame studies is that your creativity goes up, you're able to find a lot more resources, because these problems are, are often very tough and they really challenge you to find some kind of unusual solution. So that kind of training is typically very, very good for advanced players that are trying to really improve their calculation skills. So I would say these are probably the main things that allowed me to improve my level. Um, number one was just playing more principally against uh, high rated players and not being afraid of anyone, not being afraid to take risks, always playing for a win in every game. Uh, this I think just helped me strengthen uh, and improve my chess overall. Um, number two, learning new openings. Uh, I think this introduced me to a bunch of new positions that allowed me to, again, develop my chess and grow my chess to a deeper level. And of course, training with, with a real person uh, over the board. Of course, you can do online training as well uh, to achieve a lot of the same benefits. And just this ended up making me look at a lot of chess, solving a lot of problems and, and really developing my abilities uh, as much as I could. So during this time that I've been talking about, I wasn't working with a private coach because I just felt like all of the chess books and resources were already out there. All I needed to do was just put the time and put the effort in and work through them. Uh, there have been so many great chess books written in history. I still haven't read most of the best ones. And I just felt like, you know, I don't need a coach telling me to, to go read what I already know is out there. But I was struggling to get that final norm and I had already crossed 2400. So I felt like I just needed a little bit of uh, push to get there. Uh, I decided to start working with Grandmaster Elshan uh, Morardi Abadi, uh, who's originally from Iran but has been living in the States for a number of years now. Um, I actually just met him at, at a tournament, I think back in 2016, and uh, we played an interesting game. We went over it, we, you know, we kind of hit it off. Uh, he gave me some good advice in the post-mortem afterwards. He was just a very nice guy. So a couple months later, I reached out to him and just asked him if he, he'd be interested in, in helping me uh, get that final IM norm. Um, he was interested and we started uh, working together. We had a couple of sessions and uh, we mainly worked on some general things, you know, like calculation, decision making, um, playing typical end games. One of the most interesting pieces of advice that Elshan gave me was that he told me that basically every new title player, whether they're getting the IM title or the GM title, uh, has to bring something new or fresh to the already very, very huge body of chess theory. Of course, there's already a ton of openings out there, a ton of variations, almost every line has been explored to death. But even 
So there are still new ways and fresh ways of playing different types of positions. And if you're just trying to follow the main lines and just copy the top players, number one, you're always just gonna be one step behind, but also you're gonna be playing positions that everyone else is studying and it's very hard to get any kind of edge over your opponents if everyone is just playing the same main lines. So he strongly suggested that I find some kind of pet lines, pet variations, or just look for new ways of playing certain types of positions so that I could potentially get a bigger edge in the opening over my opponent. Um, one opening where I tried to apply this was the King's Indian. When I first learned the King's Indian, I had kind of a fixed repertoire there where I was just having one option against each of White's main tries. And after working with Elshon, I tried to learn different ways of playing the King's Indian, uh, especially in the classical main line. If you're familiar with the position after move six or seven, black has a bunch of options there to develop, uh, specifically the knight on b8. You can go to d7, a6, c6 and there's different ways of playing that position. Um, and by learning uh, a few of those different variations, I was able to choose which way I would wanna play against specific opponents. Um, some opponents that were more theoretical, I would probably go with a rarer choice. If I felt like my opponent was less theoretical, then I would go for the more theoretical knight c6. And I think by opening myself up to, again, trying out new positions, finding fresh ways of playing the lines, uh, I was able to potentially get a small edge in preparation against certain opponents. Uh, it also really helped my confidence in knowing that I could play many different types of positions. Now, I only started working with Elshon after I had already earned two IM norms. So of course we both understood that it was just a matter of time before I got my final norm. Um, but still, I think working with an experienced player like him really just helped me get over that final hump and it was only a few months before I ended up getting that final IM norm towards the end of 2016 uh, anyways. So basically these were the main things that I ended up doing. I think the most important was a total shift uh, in attitude in terms of just trying to be more ambitious and always thinking about the long run, um, not worrying about my individual result in any tournament but rather just trying to improve my chess play overall and I think this is one of the biggest things that helped me actually increase my level and start playing better against high rated players specifically. Uh, number two was learning new lines and new openings and being open to, to playing a position in a different style that I had before with the express intent of just developing and growing uh, my abilities as a chess player. Uh, of course, a lot of difficult calculation exercises were also involved. In my case, it was solving a bunch of endgame studies with a training partner, uh, as well as using the training partner to play out a bunch of games, blitz games, typical endgames, uh, to get a lot of experience uh, playing these positions out over the board uh, without the pressure and stress of, of being in a tournament. I think that really helps uh, when you're learning a new opening, is to just play the opening as many times as you can in practice. And finally, of course, working with the coach uh, gave me that final boost of confidence that I needed and uh, just a little bit of help to get over that final hurdle and end up earning that last norm. All right, guys, I hope you found the video helpful. If you did, please leave a like on it. It really does help a lot. And if you have any questions about anything I covered, feel free to let me know in the comment section below. Hope you have a good one and take care.